Good evening and welcome once again to the 18th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival. This is day five and here we are coming to you live from the Endler Hall where our faculty concert is taking place at 8 p.m. Something for Everyone is one of the attractions of the evening concerts here at the SICMF and that's certainly the case tonight with music by Alison Loggins Hull, the octet for piano winds and strings by Balakirev and the Mother Goose Suite by Ravel in the first half, and then Mendelssohn, his quintet number one in A in the second half. Last night's faculty concert will certainly be remembered for some time. In the first half, we heard the first performance of a new work jointly written by Michaela Alyssa Smith and Tina Skull. Let's listen back to the opening of that world premiere now. My name is Bettina Skow, and I am a black woman of mixed descent. It is essential that I situate my story within the South African context. I am grateful and mindful of the fact that I come from a resilient bloodline of ancestors in which generations of our families and communities have survived and thrived despite the social construct of race barriers engineered to hamper our specific survival. I come from a generation of people whose her and his stories have been erased and invisibilized. It's vital to understand the colonizer's role in engineering the story of scientific research to champion racial hierarchy as a way of asserting racial dominance and superiority. This propagated the notion of racial purity and racial hygiene, which condemn the mixing of races as unclean and impure. The worth and value of one's identity rested solely on the manipulated scientific marker of race purity, which assigned Caucasian white the position of superiority on the ladder of race. One of apartheid's key social engineering strategies was the Racial Registration Act of 1950, which forced people to register from birth as one of four distinct racial groups, namely white, Indian, colored, and black. Black people of mixed descent were racially assigned the homogenous label colored, perpetuating the damaging lie that we are the illegal descendants of miscegenation thereby fixing our identity with a branding of bastards, shamed as unwanted, relegated as an impure half-caste, debased people. All evidence of our diverse heritage from Cape slaves, the indigenous Khoi and San, African, Asian and European settlers was expunged. Colored became synonymous with inferior and worthless. And even though we know it not to be true, Decades of bearing the indignity of this stigmatization and transgenerational trauma with its damaging affliction on the psyche makes it hard to shake the lie that we are less than. It has been vital to re-examine this imposed story of colored identity and interrogate how this label manipulated and shaped the person I've become. The author Ben Ockrey says, 
It is easy to forget how mysterious and mighty stories are. They do their work in silence, invisibly, working with all the internal materials of the mind and self. Stories can be either bacteria or light. They can infect a system or illuminate the world. Lighting Our Stories, Tapestries of the Invisible, a new work by Michaela Lissa smith and Tina Skull, commissioned by the SICMF and premiered at last night's faculty concert conducted by Jakobus de Jacher. Earlier today, there were student ensemble concerts at 1 p.m. and at 5 p.m. with a masterclass by faculty violinist Andrei Baranov at 3 p.m. We're now going to go down to Brent in the foyer to see what's going on uh, on the ground, I suppose one could say. Yes, thanks so much, John. I'm standing down in the foyer and we're ready to welcome the audience into the main uh, foyer of the Endler Hall, ready for this concert this evening. Uh, the foyer is a buzz, and I think everyone's really excited for this concert as well. I'm going to head over to uh, a couple of participants over here and just get their uh, impressions of what they can expect tonight and what the festival has been like so far. Can I chat to you guys quickly? Yeah, so I want to find out what has your experience of the festival been so far? Is it your first time at the festival? What has the first couple of days been like? Um, it's been my first time at the festival. Um, it's been lots of fun. Great to meet all, all kinds of people. The faculty concerts are amazing. Best, some of the best performances I've seen in my life. And I'm glad we're only like halfway. Still so much more to go. <laughs> and what instrument do you play? Uh, so I'm a pianist and a conductor. A pianist and a conductor. I think we had an amazing concert last night with Rachmaninoff. You were in the concert. What did you think of that performance? It, it was really moving and you could see the, the performers felt the same thing. And just to hear such beautiful music, because you always hear it on like the streaming services, but to hear it live, it's just a life-changing experience. They were so Absolutely. I'm going to move over to another participant. We have a Jesse. I know you've been at the festival before. You're a flautist. We're expecting an amazing uh, concert this evening, including our faculty, Damari McGill. What are you expecting? Um, I'm expecting a lot because Damari is an excellent flautist. I can't wait. I love to hear him play. Yeah. I think we're definitely in for a treat. John, I'm going to head outside. We have something interesting happening uh, outside the Endler Steps. So let's head out there. A couple of our uh, participants have decided to yeah, busk outside of the Endler Steps to welcome our uh, audience into the Endler Hall. And uh, yeah, here they are. I want to uh, quickly chat here. Let's chat. Who could I speak to here about what you guys are uh, doing over here? Yeah. What is what was the idea? How did you guys decide to do this? So um, we're a band from Pretoria Boys High, a school band, and uh, we all ended up coming to the festival and we brought our instruments along and we thought, why don't we play outside, have some fun? We've always wanted to busk, so this was an ideal situation. Amazing. I think the audience is really thrilled to be welcomed by uh, you guys here. John, I'm going to head back to you and uh, yeah, then we can welcome the audience into the foyer for this concert. Cool. Thank you so much, Brent. And really, uh, such a nice touch. I'm glad you caught those uh, young buskers outside the end. There's nothing like on this cold winter's night as it is a reminder for those uh, who might be tuning in from the Northern Hemisphere. It is the very middle of winter here in Cape Town in Stellenbosch. It's cold. And so I hope those uh, guys outside are warmly dressed. But it really does sort of warm the soul, warm the heart before you even arrive in the Endler Hall uh, just to experience the students making music like that. And it was so nice to hear that comment earlier. Brent, you mentioned to me last night when we were having a chat how you know, you've got to follow almost all these students over the years as they've been part of the festival time and time again so you recognize their faces and so nice to hear once again how they appreciate live music because it's one thing hearing these great show pieces that, that we hear on streaming services, recordings, but to hear them sort of in the flesh, in what's really quite an intimate environment in the Endler Hall is quite something. And I think we were all very moved and affected after the Rachmaninoff last night. But more about that later when I chat to my guest, Anastasia, who was the pianist in that performance last night in the interval. So uh, it's day five, as I mentioned a bit earlier, here at the SICMF, and the fifth faculty concert is about to begin. 
So let me tell you a bit more about the first work on the program tonight. Um, the flute and the percussion section are two instrumental families one might not expect to find together in a chamber work. But any notion that the combination cannot work is dispelled, well, should be dispelled by this next piece that we'll hear, Hammers, for flute and percussion trio, written by the US-based composer Alison Loggins Hull in 2012. The marriage of these two strikingly different timbres is as eclectic as the composer herself. Loggins Hull has written for a variety of media, from television and film to radio and the concert stage. She frequently combines instruments in unusual but effective ways. She's written for singing flautist, flute and electronics, viola and electronics, and even flute and trumpet. I can't think I've ever heard that combination together. So see what you think about this work. I remember faculty flautist Damare McGill mentioning in his chat with me on the first day how much he was looking forward to presenting this work to us. So to get us into the mood for something a bit different, here's the surprise cherry on top that was added to last night's premiere by Tina Skow and her ensemble. different places I search for love in the company of strangers I walk for love in wide and open spaces hoping to find Footprint of love's traces And every time My searching led to nowhere And every time I look up and ask Where? And the silence rolling in like a roaring sea Carries a question Floating soundlessly To set the long one Set along me What to Sweet love. 
And we're back. Welcome inside the Endler Hall to this fifth faculty concert, nearly at the halfway point of the SICMF 2023, can you believe? And as I mentioned to you outside a little bit earlier, an unusual work now for flute and percussion trio. Have you ever heard that combination before? It's called Hammers, and it's written by Alison Loggins Hull. She's a young American composer, only born in 1982, and this will feature Damare McGill, our faculty flutist, together with Javon Gilliam, Trevor Barrero, Lauren Floyd, and Wesley Sumter. And quite a variety show tonight. You will have noticed the last couple of faculty concerts have really only had one major work in the first half, one in the second half. Uh, tonight we get three works in the first half. So this next piece, Hammers, if you like, is a bit of a, a, bit of a prelude to the Balakirev Octet, which follows that. Balakirev, of course, being part of this mighty handful, this group of Russian nationalist composers who worked at about the same time as Tchaikovsky. The other four, this is a pub quiz uh, question, Cesar Kui, Mazorksky, Rimsky, Korsakov, and Borodin. And then to um, French Impressionism for music by Ravel, the Mother Goose Suite, um, very nice to hear it in its chamber uh, orchestration here. Um, many folk might be familiar with the piano version, uh, their arrangements for solo piano, for four hands piano. Um, and so to hear, I believe, the South African premiere of this arrangement tonight by um, uh, Farrington of this Mother Goose Suite by Ravel uh, will be quite a treat of colors and sounds and timbres. We know Ravel was a master orchestrator and had all these different colors in mind when composing this sort of music. And then in the interval, it's Mendelssohn again. We heard his string symphony on the first night and tonight his quintet number one in A. It's very good to see a pretty full, I'd say, from where I'm sitting, at least 80 to 85% full Endler Hall this evening for a midweek concert. Lots of students and participants and faculty artists, of course, but so nice to see so many uh, members of the public, supporters from Stellenbosch, from Cape Town and surrounds uh, coming out to enjoy this performance. One might have worried with the live streaming, people would just prefer to <laughs> sit and watch from the comfort and warmth of their own homes. But as we heard one of the participants mention in the interview with Brent about 15 minutes ago, there really is nothing like live music and hearing and almost sort of feeling the electricity and the passion diffuse across the concert hall. It's a little bit different when you're watching a two-dimensional image in front of you, even when, and with no disrespect to our production team, the camera work is superb and the sound quality is very good. There's nothing like the three-dimensionality of uh, a real performance. One of the SICMF patrons, Bill van Rensburg, was telling me uh, just before coming in tonight how much he enjoyed the conversation in the Janusz Hall a bit earlier with Andrei Baranov, the violinist from last night, the Rachmaninov, who also gave the masterclass this afternoon. He was chatting to long-standing SICMF faculty violinist Nicola Dautricor. So two violinists in conversation and, and just how, how fun it was to watch them chat to one another and sort of disappointed to have missed that now because of course I was getting ready to speak to you. <laughs> um, perhaps next year we can look into uh, recording some snippets and highlights of those conversations. Well, there you can see our faculty artists coming onto the stage, the four percussionists led by our um, percussion faculty member and Damare McGill there with his flute, all getting ready for Hammers for Flute and Percussion Trio by Alison Loggins Hull.
about a showstopper, but it was a show starter. Hammers was the title of that piece for flute and percussion trio by the American composer Alison Loggins Hull. It is the 4th of July, after all, so that was probably um, part of the artistic director's thinking when she came up with uh, tonight's faculty concert lineup. And there we heard Demario McGill, Ralph Gillian, Trevor Barrero, Lauren Floyd, and Jason Sumter. So while the uh, crew are rearranging the stage for this slightly larger work, let me tell you a little bit about the chamber music of Balakirev, who lived from 1837 to 1910. Uh, and there's a note here in the program that says it's not yet become as well known as it should be. And the program we'll hear this evening, uh, the, the piece, is his octet for piano, winds and strings, opus three. When not donning his composer's hat, Balikirev was predominantly a pianist. It's therefore not surprising that much of his career is often spent around that instrument. Indeed, the octet is a rare case of chamber music by Balikirev featuring string instruments. It was only written at some point in the 1850s, having been commented on by his teacher, Glinka, in 1855, and only the first movement of this work survives in full. The second theme of the work is based on a Russian folk song, typical of the Russian nationalist school of composition. And I mentioned to you earlier that Balakirev's name is probably most familiar to you in this context. The so-called Russian Five or the Mighty Handful, along with Kui, Mussorgsky, Rimsky-Korsakov and Borodin. And along with the influential critic Vladimir Stasov, Balakirev assumes something of a senior role in the group, kind of an, an unofficial leader. So you can see the stage is being reset for this octet, of which only the first movement survives, Piano Winds and Strings, Opus 3 by Balakira. And we're waiting to be joined by Megan Jeffrey Prince. I think it's the first time our faculty pianist is joining us on stage this festival, along with Federica Saiz, violin, Carolina Herrera, viola, Pete Martens cello and Knut Erik Sundquist bass. And then Damare McGill comes back for <laughs> very different music now. Uh, Dwight Parry, I think, making his festival debut. I know we heard him briefly yesterday in the new work, but it'll be good to hear him in, in a bit more of a, um, a significant, substantial role. And then Jeffrey Pilkington for. So I think this will be a very nicely balanced um, octet. It's all about colour tonight, bearing in mind that Ravel comes next. And there's Henny just making sure everything's in place for the players. Stands, chairs are in their correct positions, at the right heights. And I'll be, uh, be ready as soon as the instrumentalists are. I don't want to talk into the opening of their piece again. <laughs> Let's have a look backstage and see what's happening there. Always feel a little bit naughty spying on the musicians like this, but well, I guess they should be ready for going out into the stage. And yes, here they come. My faculty are.
surviving and comprising the aspects of Anno Wings and Spring, Opus 3, by Moody by the Fury. And we heard the uh, fantasy artist of the Moody by the Piano, where there was so Rita Sally, striking three uh, aspects, Carolina Herrera, Viola, Pink Martin, Trevor, and Pink Martin, and Pink Martin, and in the wind, the Mario McGill, Pink White, Harry Ober, Pink Martin, and the stage, and Pink Martin, and Pink Martin. Well, some of those faculty artists will be seeing again quite soon in just a few minutes for the Mother Goose Suite by Ravel. Uh, this is an arrangement I mentioned a bit earlier by uh, Ian Farrington, and I see it's actually the South African premiere of this arrangement, which is quite cool. Ravel, of course, um, orchestrated this work for full orchestra, and we're just hearing it now in a pared-down version for chamber ensemble. Um, and, of course, it is very famous in its original form, for piano duet, it's also been arranged for solo piano and, and various other combinations of instruments. But maybe just to tell you a little bit more about this next work then, and why does it have this name, the Mother Goose Suite, Maurice Ravel, who lived from 1875 to 1937, sometimes in school textbooks referred to as a, as a French Impressionist composer along with Debussy, but that was a title or a term that he did not appreciate. This work was composed in 1910 and originally written as a piano duet um, for the children of an important Polish sculptor. Uh, the father of these children was very fond of the arts and was active in Parisian salon culture, frequently hosting poets and other literary figures at his house. And uh, Ravel was pleased with this Mother Goose suite that he wrote for Piano Duet, so he lent his remarkable talents as an orchestrator to the work a year later in 1911, creating both concert and ballet versions. And in the version we hear tonight, arranged by Ian Farrington for reduced performance forces. There are five movements, all of which are inspired by children's stories, French children's stories. The first is a pavane, a sad song for sleeping beauty, and the second depicts Little Tom Thumb. The third movement's title translates to Little Ugly Girl, Empress of the Pagodas, while the fourth depicts a conversation between beauty and the beast. And the final movement evokes a fairy garden from a French fairy tale of unclear providence. And I think that movement is my favorite. It's got wonderful glissandis towards the end uh, and really um, ends in a very dramatic way. Speaking of dramatic, we have our faculty bassist on the stage, uh, Knut Erik, um, engaging with the students. Uh, and yes, his now what's becoming very famous uh, velvet bow case is at his side. So we'll wait for the unsheathing of his bow a little bit later. But we have Rulin Khrobala playing the flute, uh, or the harp rather. Very different instruments, those. <laughs> How can one make that mistake? The harp, there she is. And um, Javon Gilliam on the timpani, our uh, faculty percussionist. Moving to the backstage camera, let's see what the artists are up to. Last minute practicing and, and anything else that needs to go down before they come out onto the stage of the Endler Hall.
So how about that? Four nations represented tonight, or, or should I say four styles or traditions of music, starting off in the United States. We've just been in Russia. We're about to visit France and then to Germany a little bit later for the quintet in A major number one by Mendelssohn. I already feel like I'm in Mendelssohn mood. Earlier this afternoon, I was listening to fine music radio and they played that wonderful overture to a Midsummer Night's Dream. But here are the faculty artists coming out. Uh, strings played by Gwendolyn Masson, first violin, Farida Bakharova, second violin. Jennifer Stumm plays the viola, again with Peter Martens cello and Knut Eric Stumquist double bass. Damare McGill, flute and piccolo in this arrangement. Right, Harry Obo, Yao Huang Shai, clarinet. Joshua Elmore Bassoon, Jeffrey Pilkington Horn, and Ruline Krobala Harp, and last but not least, Jean Vaugilliam Percussion. So here is the Mother Goose Suite by Ravel in five movements.
suite of French fairy tales, The Mother Goose Suite by Maurice Ravel, in that arrangement of his orchestrated version by Ian Farrington. And so much wonderful colour there from the goose calls to the uh, beast uh, of beauty and the beast and the bassoon there. And on that note, so nice to see faculty artist Joshua Elmore on the stage, also for one of the first times this SICMF. Jennifer Stumm there uh, leading the way out, um, a contender for Best Dressed Award this year. Um, but as I mentioned a bit earlier, just such wonderful colour in that music. Uh, that final movement in particular, the Fairy Garden, my favourite. I particularly like the recording um, for the piano with the Levesque sisters of that movement. And it was used in such a poignant scene in that film, Call Me By Your Name, from some years ago. So that piece always reminds me now of that film. But there we have faculty artists, uh, I, I suppose, in, in the order of their instruments, Damare Miguel, uh, flute and piccolo, and then Dwight Parry Oboe, Yao Guang Zhai, clarinet, and Joshua Elmore bassoon, with Jeffy Pilkington harp. We have Rulin Kobala on harp, and Jarvon Gillian percussion, and then Gwendolyn Nassen and Farida Bakarova violins. Jennifer Stumm, Viola, Knut Martins Cello, and Knut Eric Sundquist, double bass. Well, it's time for the interval. I'll be chatting in just a few minutes to Anastasia Marquina uh, if she's got any fingers left after last night's performance uh, in the Rachmaninoff. So very excited to chat to her. Also a, a faculty first-timer here at the SICMF. So do join me in a couple of minutes for my chat with her.
Welcome back to the interval outside the Endler Hall. As you know by now, I always have a very special guest joining me in the interval. And I first want to check if she has any fingers left after last <laughs> night's performance. Yes, they're still there. Still there. All Just ten. A, <laughs> a few words of introduction because she's a very special member of our piano faculty this year. First time in South Africa, first time at the SICMF. That's Anastasia Markina born and raised in St. Petersburg in Russia. She gave her first public performance at the age of 10. She's received top prizes in Europe, Russia, the United States, and has performed all over the world. I should just mention this is a very abbreviated CV. It's taken her from the United States and Canada to Mexico, the Netherlands, Germany, Spain, and Russia. All sorts of collaborations with people such as James Galway, the flautist, and cellist Eugene Osachi, with whom she's recorded two CDs. She studied at the University of North Texas and the St. Petersburg Rimsky Korsakov College of Music. Anastasia, thank you for being my guest this evening. Thank you for inviting me. And welcome to the festival. Thank you. What are your first impressions of South Africa, of Stellenbosch, of being here? It's incredible. In absolutely incredible. The, I was standing, my first day I was standing outside the weather was perfect. I know it's winter here. The sky was absolutely clear and, and the beauty of it all, and I haven't yet been any really anywhere. There was not really any time, but I appreciated the peacefulness, the calmness, the cool weather, because where I come from, it's, um, it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's about f over 40 degrees, Gosh. about 40 degrees Celsius. It's like being in the oven. Yes, so this is a welcome nice. relief. Oh, yes. 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 Are you able to do a bit of sightseeing while you're here? I think that we're going to go see a little bit on Sunday before my, my, before my flight. So right. I, I'm really looking forward to Good. that. Good. And hopefully the first time of many here in South Africa and with I us in Stellenbosch. I really hope so. so. So before we talk a bit more about the festival, if you can tell us about last night, because I think so many of us and there's been so much commentary amongst the audience and on social media about how moving that performance of the Rachmaninoff was. How was it for... Get emotional. <laughs> um, well, you know, this piece he wrote um, on the death of Tchaikovsky. So every single note has this Russian uh, deep vein kind of, you know, like cutting vein kind of pain. Uh, every single, every single note has so much grief, so much sorrow. When you lose the master, you, when you lose your master, um, and of course the whole, it's a very long piece. Very demanding as well. A little bit. Yes. A little bit. It demands Some fast huge hands. Some very loud, yes, as of course he had. As the composer, he gave the first performance. Yes. He had a little bit bigger hands than I do. Just a little, Just a little bit. bit. <laughs> so um, it's very demanding, technically. Um, I think the difficulty with that piece, te from technique point of view, is because it's so busy, so filled with notes and chords, and to, to stay in the right balance with violin and cello. How do you manage that, the ensemble? Because did you have... Did you feel enough preparation time? Uh, well, I've played this piece before, so, mm. and you know, I've played with Eugene Asachi for years and years, right. so I know how to play with the cello. Mm. <laughs> and my trick is if, if you can't hear the cello. Yeah, you're probably little, too loud. Little, so, yes. Yeah. So you have to, we never had a sound check on stage. So, you know, we rehearse twice. And then we go play, but we are professionals. We, we know what we're doing. Of course. You know, what it, so what I think. <laughs> and so it was rather just a conversation. Like you and I are having conversation. Yes. We were having conversation on stage. The very best so, kind of chamber music. The very best kind of chamber music, absolutely. Because, you know, and when the cello has a theme, I'm a lot more sensitive. I try to bring out different voice, voices on the piano to, um, to help him. Same with violin. So there are tricks, you know, but then there are secrets. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and did I'm you joking. find you had to get into a particular sort of mental space before a big performance like that? Or, or, 
presumably before any performance, you have to get into the right mindset. But did last night require something particularly special or deep from yes, you? Yes, because it's very technically demanding piece. Um, I had to make sure that I'm warm before the mental state, so that my mental state is in a good place. I had to make sure that my hands are warm. Um, you didn't have one of these before the performance. Not yet. But oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, a few to celebrate. A absolutely. Perhaps. But no, never before. <laughs> no, no. This will be a different mental state if I did. <laughs> uh, but this is. For me, this piece is especially uh, very special because I've played it with, with uh, Eugene Asaji and uh, he was actually a guest here years That's back, right. several times and, and when he passed away now. And so this was a first, you know, this was the first time I was able to play this trio again and with such incredible musicians as Boris and Andre, I mean, this, so this was, for me personally, I can of course only speak for myself, but for me personally, this was um, really, really special. And I'm really thankful to Nina for inviting me and for letting me, and I told her so, and I'm very grateful for letting me experience this and letting me share this with people in the audience. Speaking of which, I am absolutely amazed at how receptive, warm, appreciative the audience is here. I'm not saying that, you know, in the United States they're snobs, you know. <laughs> no, 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 of course. I'm, but here, um, the audience, I, I do coachings for chamber music, you know. Mm -hmm. The students are hungry yes. for lessons. They're hungry to learn. I don't know how about the better word to use. That's the exact yeah. perfect expression. Yes. They're hungry to learn. And can you blame them with this expertise, this talent, this wealth of enthusiasm and energy from artists like yourself? I mean, even from me, who's just watching from the sidelines, it's incredible. When I go home in the evening, I don't want to leave and I can't wait till the next day. Yes, and this whole week is, is amazing. But, but I notice the students, they come to the concerts. The, the, even the, the little band, the Klezmer yes. band, <laughs> you know, playing outside, it's amazing. It's, they just get together and play beautifully. This is the spirit. It's just, it's... And when you play for audience like this, it's very different feel. You know, it's, you don't play for people who are like judging you. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, no. You really play... And I can feel the energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were hanging on every note last night. So thank you. Thank you. And this is a big Rachmaninoff year as well. So yes. that also sort of adds an extra layer of. And I appreciate Nina scheduling that piece. Yes. To this is homage. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. So it's it's very special. Very special. So with your teaching hat on for a moment, are, are there particular lessons or messages you're hoping to get across to the students? while you're here, you have a master class later this week, for example. Right. Um, it depends on the group. It depends on, the, on, on what they need the most at the moment. But because of a time constraint, I could only have, for instance, one hour with them and never see them again. So then we have to make decision. If they're almost ready to perform, I can put some bra finishing touches. <laughs> Sprinkle some seasoning, final seasoning. <laughs> right. Some fairy dust. Yes. If, if need a little bit more work needs to be done, then we go, if there's time, then we can go into some basic stuff. Like, let's fix the rhythm. How do we fix the rhythm? Well, let's use metronome. Yes. Yeah. You know, not everybody loves to do this, but mm. it's, it's, it's a important. A reminder of some of the basics. Yes. Rhythm. Sometimes intonation, if this is um, a, like piano trio, for instance. Yes. Some, some basic stuff, yes. Right. But everything is important. But what message to get across? Stay passionate for what you're doing, because I can see definitely passion. But you have to not just be just passionate. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. You actually have to educate yourself, listen to the big masters, why they do this. You know, what do they do when they perform? 
if, if there's nothing else comes if you if, if nothing else listen to the big masters thank so. you Anastasia big masters like you who are here well at the festival. <laughs> Well, we don't have too much time left. You've heard the bell to go back yes. inside. So some cheeky quick fire questions before we end. Mozart or Mendelssohn? Oh. And you have to give a reason for your answer. I have to? Quickly, the clock is ticking. Mozart. Why? Innocent. Bach or Beethoven? Bach. Funda foundation. Purity. Nothing that's where everything starts. Shostakovich. Or Shostakovich. <laughs> Fair. Wine because, or... Because guard ranging. Yes. Yes. Wine or vodka? Wine, of course. <laughs> First half or second half? Of... Second half. Symphony or string trio? Symphony. Thank you, Anastasia. Very, Thank very you. grateful to you for Thank joining you. me tonight. Thank you. For sharing your warmth and wisdom with all of us on the stage and here uh, tonight on our live stream. We're going to cross to Brent now, who is going to uh, just update us before we go back into the hall for the Mendelssohn this evening. Yes, yes thanks, thanks so much, John. John. I've, I've moved, moved down, down to, to the, the point where I've caught up with the lineage percussion uh, trio from, from the United States, States and, and uh, they performed in the first work on the program tonight, and uh, they're one of the invited ensembles at the Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival this year. They had their own concert on Friday, and uh, I'm just interested to hear what these first couple of days have been like in South Africa. Wesley, let me start by you. This is your first time in South Africa, and what have your impressions been here? Yeah, this is actually yeah, this is my first time here. I really didn't know what to expect. Coming, coming all, all the way here, a 24, 24 hour travel day, but, but the weather's beautiful, the people are nice, the music has been a great, great experience all together. It's been incredible. Yeah. I see we have our percussion faculty that's just joined us here, Javon Gilliam. You have, you have quite a team going, going here that you brought uh, with, with you from, from, from the United States. States. What was this first work on the program like? It, it was, looked like, like such a complex work, work to rehearse and put together. Have you guys, you guys performed it before? Let me ask you, Lauren. Sure. Yeah, yeah so, so the first work on the, on the program was a uh, uh, work by Alison Loggins Hole called Mammers. Uh, uh, this is the first time that we have all played this and the first time we played with Damari. But as you can see, it worked out really well. It's a great piece. She used a lot of elements of like kind of fragmented pickup things that hammer on throughout the piece. So. And, and I'm going to move over to you, Trevor. Trevor. Uh, what, what have your first, first impressions been here with all the orchestra rehearsals and working with also percussion participants from, from South Africa? What's, what's the process been like? like? Oh, it's been, I mean, just, just such a pleasure. It's been very busy um, for all the students here, all the faculty here. We just jam pack so much into a short period of time, which makes it such a rewarding experience because we're doing orchestra rehearsals in the morning. We're going on to percussion ensemble, which we're helping coach and work with the students here. Um, and then we have these wonderful concerts in the evening. And when we aren't performing, then we get to you know view them in the audience as well. So it's just been a wonderful experience, a lot packed into a short amount of time, and we're just having a blast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to get to you, Javon. It's your second time uh, back, back in Stellenbosch. And uh, what made you decide to come back? back and what's, this, uh, what's it been like being back for a second time? Uh, the people. I mean, I, I think, think that's, that's the first thing is, is that, you know, you want to be around good people. And you want to be around good people that create good music, right? It's our job to make the world a better place through what we do music. And so having great people is first. And then having being able to get these guys to come out as well. Uh, it's, it's been, been really great being able, able to break bread, to get to hang with these guys and know them a little bit better. And, and like, it's creating these relationships are what, you know, you, you, what you live for, what we do, do sort of day by day to keep them. And like, I expect to hear from these guys for years and years to come because of the bonds and the relationships that we've built over the last week. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what we mentioned last night as well. When we have participants and faculty that come back year after year, these relationships really grow as the festival develops as well. John, John, the, the bells, bells have rung, the, the foyer is emptying out. out. I'm going to head back to you so that we can head back into the hall for the second half of this concert. concert. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brent. And that was such a nice treat to meet the percussionists of that first work, given that it is the 4th of July, America Day. I didn't realize they were all visiting with Javon. So thank you very much for sharing that. A few words about this next piece, the Mendelssohn, because indeed the foyer is very empty. Mendelssohn makes another appearance at the SICMF for this quintet number one in A, scored for two violins, two violas, and cello. It was composed in 1826, revised six years later, and this was a work of relative youth. 
although it's difficult to describe the work as youthful when one considers that it was written after the completion of the octet, one of the world's great chamber works and written when Mendelssohn was only 16. On revision of this work we hear tonight, Mendelssohn discarded the original minuet and trio third movement and instead inserted an intermezzo before the scherzo, and this intermezzo was written in memory of his close friend and sometime violin teacher, Eduard Ritz, whose death deeply affected Mendelssohn, and so that movement is in fact subtitled In Memoriam. Ritz and Mendelssohn's relationship also extended into the professional arena. Ritz was the concertmaster of the orchestra Mendelssohn used for the famous revival of the St. Matthew Passion by Bach, which effectively established Bach as part of the modern musical canon. When Mendelssohn received news of Ritz's death on his 23rd birthday, he wrote in a letter, a new chapter in my life has begun, but as yet there is no title. Well, there wasn't a dry eye in the house after the elegiac trio number two by Rachmaninoff last night, movingly played by Andre, Boris and Anastasia earlier. So here to sneak in just a minute or two is the opening of the second movement, after which I'll see you inside the hall. Appetite was suitably wetted after that flashback from last night's Rachmaninoff. We're back inside the hall, the Endler Hall, for this fifth faculty concert, the Mendelssohn Quintet No. 1 in A Major, Opus 18, and welcoming onto the stage Frederica Saiz, Violin 2, Zambi Fandé, Viola Jennifer Schum, Viola 2, David Cohen Cello, uh, led by Nicola Dalti Paul, Violin 1.
Mendelssohn at his finest, cheerful, playful, with a touch of introspection in the second movement there, the intermezzo that he dedicated to a close friend. There we heard the quintet number one in A major, opus 18, Nicola D'Artricot leading that quintet, together with what well, was a very symmetrical arrangement, didn't you think? Frederica Saiz, second violin, Zandi van Dijk, first viola, Jennifer Stumm, second viola, and David Cohen, cello. Unusual instrumentation. Did you notice how at times the second viola and cello were playing very closely together? Oh, good teamwork. Nice to see the musicians appreciating one another and of course appreciating the applause from the audience here in the Endler Hall at the 18th Stellenbosch International Chamber Music Festival where we're coming to you live. What? No encores? We were just saying here it feels a bit early to be leaving a faculty concert after all these jam-packed uh, evenings, surprises lined up the performer's sleeves, um, but really quite refreshing Mendelssohn this evening. I'll be back in just a minute or two.
as festival director, Peter Martens wrote in his foreword to the festival program, here at the SICMF, both the old and the new can be heard side by side in perfect proportion. Music by Mendelssohn there, ending a veritable tour of musical history. Before that, Ravel and Balakirev, and starting all firmly in the 21st century with music by the young American composer Alison Loggins Hull. I'll be back again tomorrow night for another evening at the SICMF. If you can, join us during the day for the student ensemble concerts at 1 p.m. and at 5 p.m. and the masterclass with faculty trombonist Mark Hampson at 3 p.m. And he'll be in conversation with fellow brass player Jeffrey Pilkington at 7. In the sixth faculty concert tomorrow evening at 8 p.m., the piano quartet in E major by Sergei Taneyev, a student of Tchaikovsky, and the octet by Joachim Raff, influenced, of course, by the famous work written by the young Mendelssohn. So do join us then for another evening of chamber music magic. On behalf of the team here at the SICMF 2023, this is John Woodland wishing you good night. Thank you.